Good morning friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options and this is the Morning Market Prep video for April 24th, 2023. Well, Friday, my goodness, Friday was just one of those days that you wish you would have stayed in bed instead of sat here and watched the market chop. And unfortunately, I think there's a possibility we could see the same here today um, and maybe even tomorrow as we wait for those big tech earnings reports from Microsoft and Google. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in, let's buckle up, let's get ready for the Monday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again everyone and thanks so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Let's take a peek at these charts and see if we can figure out how we might want to approach the market for today. I did an e-learning session on uh, Friday afternoon for members of Hit and Run Candlesticks and Right Way Options and one of the things I talked about is the frustration of this market and I asked the question how many of you have traded here recently and just found out that the it, the, the the trade really didn't produce anything and that's one of the things that we're dealing with here right now with the market being stuck between ranges we've got a high range a low range and all four of the indexes are stuck in this range and so it's really not that big a surprise that it's a little bit frustrating right now um, one of the things that um, there's been an awful lot of pump and inspiration and hopefulness and all kinds of things about these earnings reports but then we continue to have concerns about banks we continue to have concerns about the rising bond rates we continue to hear that the fed is going to raise rates and that just puts a damper on everything so we've been stuck in these ranges so what does that mean for today well what i would suggest here is if those bulls find inspiration today to move higher well, we can look right up here in these areas, maybe a little bit of test up in here. If we can pop through that, maybe a test up here. But um, still that uncertainty overall of that big uh, price resistance in the chart. Now, um, if the bears find inspiration, well, then maybe a retest uh, for our lows here uh, this last week. <clears throat> maybe we'll test in there. And if that doesn't hold, we test on down in here um, for that price support. The concern I think the market has right now is if we were to break that support level, um, just how far we might push to the downside. Now, technically here, we're looking okay. There's nothing wrong with these charts. We're holding above our 500-day moving average. Our short-term moving averages are crossed up. Notice our 50-day moving average remains very, very flat after this decline and flattening out. Um, there'd be no reason to believe why we couldn't have a retest of that 50-day moving average here in the near future if those bears, for some reason, find inspiration but just watch those price levels right now and as we wait for for the big tech reports from microsoft and google on tuesday uh, well um just expect a whole lot more chop um if we take a look at our spy spy very much the same stuck in a range here now certainly spy as you can see we've we've just recently slipped out from underneath this upside trend but it is just that hurry up and wait that we see here in the market creating these issues so once again if those bulls find inspiration i would look for them to push back up off of this price support push back up and see if we can get up back up here and test that resistance level in the chart i honestly would not expect those levels to be broken until we find the inspiration of these earnings reports and then if those bears find inspiration well i would suggest look for a retest of this area in here as support and if that fails then i would suspect that we start moving down and retesting um, some price support in this area so we're just stuck in a range um, not doing a whole lot here to move around if we take a look at our iwm excuse me our qqq 
our QQQ kind of flat in here as well, just stuck in a range um, and not really going anywhere. And as you can see, if we were to count this out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 days so far stuck in this price range. So uh, as you can imagine, um, <sighs> The frustration that you're feeling um, with the market is justified and maybe you might want to think about am i pushing too hard trying to make something out of nothing here when we've just been stuck not able to really move here in these indexes so this is a bullish pattern remains a bullish pattern the trend remains up and we continue to see um, this weight uh, for big tech reports to maybe provide us that inspiration. So if the bulls can get going in here, well, let's look for some retest up into to these levels up here to see if we can push on higher. And if the bears are inspired, well, then I would look for a break of that support, maybe even that trend, if they were to get going to the downside. If we look at IWM, well, IWM just also just stuck in a range underneath tremendous resistance. This remains the most bearish of the indexes out there. Tremendous resistance above. So again, find inspiration for the bulls, push up in here, see if we can break through there. Find inspiration for the bears. We might see if we break down through here. Right now, futures are suggesting kind of a flat open they're trying to improve right now with the pre-market pump that we've seen every day the last couple of weeks. Pump it up, pump it up, heading into the uh, open, and then nothing really happens. Um, so just watch that closely here. Uh, we've got that uncertainty in Europe and, and even Asia last night was pretty much flat. Just lots of uncertainty circulating in this market. If we take a look at our VIX, our VIX, looking at this, you would su suggest that no one cares, that nothing is happening here. But unfortunately, there's a lot happening here. And as a matter of fact, you know, record outflows have been moving into those money market funds to protect themselves about from what people believe, lots of folks believe, um, recession and some trouble ahead here in the market. Now, I don't know if that's true, and I don't think they know anything more than um, you and I know, but certainly um, all of that volume moving out of, the, out of the market has created some impacts here to the VIX. And then also um, the, the massive zero data expiration trading that's going on is also having a weird effect here on the market. So I don't think we're as... Um, I don't think we're as calm as what this might be showing us here in the market. Um, I think we're probably winding up for a really big point move. Um, so just be a little bit careful and, and really know that the CBOE is coming out with another VIX product um, trying to combat some of the oddness that we're seeing here in the new, uh, in the old VIX. Um, and I think it's due to those zero data expiration options. Let's take a look at our T2122. Now, T2122 has been indicating that we've been kind of overbought here, but we just really haven't had any momentum to move us either bullishly or bearishly in the market. And you can see on Friday, we moved down and then right at the end of the day, we had a surge of buyers coming in that just kind of hooked us back. Um, in that chart. So here we are. Um, no, remember T2122 doesn't tell us which way we're going to go. It just tells us where those pressure points are. And you can see if those bulls can find inspiration, we certainly have opened up an upside opportunity in the chart. And if those bears find inspiration, we certainly have a downside opportunity in the chart. And I suspect we're going to see another day of lackluster movement because we're just waiting. If we take a look at our T2108, well, oops, our T2108 was just basically flat on Friday, a little bit of buying right at the end of the day, turned it up just slightly. We're still stuck in that range, 45, 46% of the stocks 
trying to hold above their 50 day or 40 day moving average and as you can see we're stuck between a range of some price support maybe in this chart some price resistance here in the chart and it's really just a hurry up and wait to find out whether those big tech um, um, rallies uh, can actually be justified and supported by earnings so it's a wait and see and then if we take a look at our T2107, T2107 almost dead flat. It's been running in this flat line here for several days. Um, resistance above, support below, 45% of the stocks um, holding above their 200 day. We're just kind of lingering here, waiting for some kind of inspiration. T2101 continues to decline here. You can see the T2101 is telling us that there is no momentum in the market. We're just stuck in this range. Uh, the wandering back and forth is creating lots and lots of chop, lots of frustration. And um, in the coaching sessions that I've been you know, working with people um, in trading, finding uh, tremendous frustration, lots of losses, none of them are big, but lots of losses because we're trying to trade a market that really is stuck in the mud and can't quite seem to find anything to, to move along um, um, out of that area. Let's take a look at our um, economic calendar here for today. And our economic calendar, pretty light on the day, but as we ramp up through the week, wow, we've got some big reports coming our way that could provide quite a bit of price action. First off, we've got the Chicago Fed National Activity here today, and we've got the Dallas Fed manufacturing numbers. Um, boy, these have not been good numbers here recently. I kind of suspect they're not going to be that great a number this time, uh, considering some of the numbers we saw about last week, but um, not the kind of numbers that really move the market a bunch. The other thing that's been pretty remarkable to me is as bad as our manufacturing numbers have been, market doesn't care. We're not, we're just absolutely willing to ignore really bad economic numbers right now um, in favor of, of earnings and the hype around earnings. So just keep that in mind. We've got a couple of bond auctions today to be thinking about. Now, as we progress through the week, we've got some big numbers that could move the market pretty substantially. Consumer confidence um, and new home sales, that, those will be um, interesting numbers. Um, of course, on Tuesday, we got bond auction in here. Well, the one good news is there's no Fed speakers where we finally entered the blackout period here for Fed speakers. Um, so we won't be getting any of that this week. Um, on Wednesday, normal mortgage applications, but here we go. There's that big durable goods report, international trading goods. Those are both market moving reports we'll want to be paying attention to. As we slide into Thursday, we've got a GDP number coming along with our jobless claims. Um, obviously market moving report and then going into Friday we get the personal incomes and outlays number which is the Fed's favorite um, number on inflation so expect some volatility around these numbers this week. Let's take a look at um, our earnings calendar here for today. Now our earnings calendar um, is going to really start ramping up. Today is not so, such a big day. There are some market movers in here. We'll cover them real quick. But um, if you want to catch the full list of notables, make sure you click the link just below the title of the video. That'll take you back to the morning blog so you can catch that full list. Um, AGNC uh, will be reporting today. Keep an eye on that. We're going to hear from BOH here as well. Um, CDNS, whoops. You know, they make you type the right symbol here um, to find the stock, the stock chart. So um, that's always a challenge for me in the mornings. Uh, CDNS, nice little consolidating range here. This could be interesting if that finds inspiration for the bulls or the bears. 
here this morning. Watch that close. Uh, CLF, uh, Cleveland Cliffs, um, we've been seeing steel struggling here a, a bit. So kind of keep an eye on that CLF report here today. We're going to hear uh, from FRC. Um, FRC is one of those challenged banks. Uh, that'll be interesting here today. Um, we're going to hear from um, Credit Suisse um, coming up here as well. So um, also one of those very challenged banks out there to see how that's going to go. And then um, at the end of the day, um, not much inspiration as far as big gaps or anything for tomorrow. We've got uh, Whirlpool that we'll be reporting. So keep an eye on that. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could please do me that favor and that would be leave that brief comment, clicking those thumbs up buttons, that helps a ton. Sharing the videos out on your social media feed and also just a huge shout out to all you folks who support the channel through the Buy Me A Coffee link just below the title of the video. Thank you so, so much. You guys are just awesome. Never would have expected this many folks um, would be subscribed to this channel. It's, uh, I do my best to put out good content, but None of it would happen if it weren't for you folks watching these videos. So thank you so much. Let's take a look at some of these stocks. And remember, guys, these aren't recommendations to buy or sell any security. You have to do your own due diligence. Be very, very careful in a market like this. Um, I would expect this week big gap ups, big gap downs will be possible um, after we get these after the bell earnings reports, particularly from big tech. So just be prepared for that and be watching pretty darn closely. Um, let's take a quick look here. One of the things that's been causing us a lot of pain and concern here in the market is the rising of bond yields. And as those bond yields are going up, we're seeing a little bit of weakness here in the dollar. Now take a look, we broke this little downtrend and we're holding in here. So perhaps we might start to see a little bit of, maybe a little bit of strengthening in the dollar if we can hold some of these price supports and that move back up. As you guys remember, I had mentioned this abandoned baby as being a very bearish uh, pattern here for uh, the US dollar. And if that continues to weaken here, if we were to f fail um, in that area, then I would be keeping a pretty close eye on some of the precious metals. Now we know gold and silver have had quite a move uh, to the upside, um, holding above $2,000 an ounce here in gold. A um, lot of little price support in here. We're pretty steep in this rally. It's it's wouldn't be out of the question to see this continue to pull back. But let's keep an eye on this. If we can hold these support levels in this chart right in here, then there may be that opportunity that this could then begin to move back to the upside. So watch that close here on that chart. Silver also has been very, very strong. And if you guys are looking for something that these are like paper gold and paper silver, if you're looking for something um, that is actual physical, take a look at PHYS. PHYS is very affordable if you want to start holding um, buying and holding some gold. Now, I would recommend you go to their website, check out their um, check out their information on this. But at fifteen dollars and fifty cents, this is not an expensive way to play gold. And then, of course, PSLV would be the silver ETF um, where you get physical silver as well. So watch that. Watch those closely. Then let's take a look at copper. Now copper looked like it was getting ready for that move to the upside. It had a pretty ugly fallout here, just all of a sudden in FCX breaking down. So not the best of patterns here. I think any rally back here in copper could set up that head and shoulders uh, topping pattern and actually end up being a short trade. If we take a look, however, at SCCO, seeing a very different situation here on copper with SCCO. 
certainly got a pullback here, you know, in the, the bad earnings of FCX. But watch this big support area in here. In this pullback, if that can hold this higher low, I would be looking for some upside opportunity if that can start popping and moving in there to that upside. I'm going to again continue to bring up uh, FedEx. FedEx in a beautiful upside trend. This pattern is very, very strong. We clearly have quite a little bit of resistance over here on the chart to be thinking about. But if we're going to be in bullish market, if this is if this is it and we're just going up from here uh, we're not going to worry about recession we're not going to worry about earnings problems or anything like that then we're definitely going to need our shippers to move up because this is going to show us the health of our consumer out here because so much is purchased online anymore and shipped directly to your door we're going to need these shippers to be showing us lots of bullishness um, that folks are out there buying and um, having those products shipped now when i looked at um, uh, amazon here boy i think that is still a little bit in question um, amazon will be coming up on earnings here on the 27th and you can see we just trying to poke through this resistance here in the chart so we're breaking through there that is a bullish sign here for amazon that maybe we're starting to recover but that earnings report here on the 27th could change every same thing. So I would be really, really careful here with Amazon. Um, I think there is that potential. This could have a big move on earnings. And I gotta tell you, it could be either up or down. So watch that carefully. Try not to um, over trade in these um, uh, big tech reports that are coming our way just watch for some big moves and then the potential for some big gap ups or big gap downs um, the next day in the market watch those carefully healthcare has been one of those interesting um, trades in the market to be paying attention to and i still really like bmy this thing continues to set up nicely we broke down here just a little bit recovered right back through i would be watching um, for this right in here, I've got an alert right there on that pink line, waiting to see if BMY is going to move on higher. And we've been we've been seeing some really good um, stocks. Um, whoops, in that area. Take a look at Eli Lilly. Wow, just running like crazy here, breaking through resistance. I wouldn't chase it at this point, but a little rest or pullback would then set up that next opportunity to the upside. So keep a close eye on some of those healthcare, defensive sector area stocks, which have been really strong. And then even into the utilities sector, utilities have been, whoops, have been holding in here nice with a bullish pattern and seeing lots of those utility stocks showing bullishness as well. So keep an eye on those. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great results in your training. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for being here. I do appreciate it. And I'll see you right back here, bright and early Tuesday morning. Wish you guys all the best today.